welcome to the IOTA channel and to the second video in a series in which I share my journey of setting up a Domotics home automation system. And in this second episode we zoom in on the installation of DietPi and Domotics. Before flashing the DietPi operating system we need to enable the Raspberry Pi to boot from SSD. I chose to go this route since in my experience SD cards in Raspberry Pis tend to fail after a while. I also saw a video from Andreas Spies and I'll link the video in my video description where he tested the performance differences between SD cards versus a USB SSD as a hard drive for the Raspberry Pi. To make the Pi boot from USB we need to first do a traditional installation of Raspberry Pi OS onto the SD card boot up the Pi, install and switch to the latest bootloader and change the boot order to boot from USB first. The detailed how-to is beyond the scope of this video, but is explained on tomshardware.com. After this, just go to the dietpi.com website to download the image to install on the Raspberry Pi. You may also have the same jaw-dropping moment I had when you see the amount of optimized single board computer images the distro maintainer actually maintains for DietPi. When the 7-zip file is downloaded and extracted, just connect the USB disk to your computer and flash the image file to the disk. I used Belena Etcher to accomplish this. Now, Connect the SD to a USB port of the Raspberry Pi, connect peripherals such as keyboard, mouse, display and network cable and plug in the power adapter. I plugged in the Raspberry Pi, I plugged in the, S, the USB SSD and now my Raspberry Pi is booting up for the first time. And here we are at the login screen where the default username is root and dietpy is the default password. So I press enter here and enter root and as a password dietpy, press enter. Now at this first login I'm being uh, yeah, presented with this pop-up message where I will press OK. After which I am asked whether I want to change my default password for this installation. I'm going to cancel it for the time being, but of course, if you are installing your Diet Pi in a production environment, it's advisable to change the password here and also here, which I'm canceling out of now as well. Now I'm being asked whether I want to enable or disable the serial console, so I'm going to disable it here since I will not be using it in this installation. The first screen I'm being shown is the DietPi software screen, where I can install a variety of software. I can do that by going down to Software Optimized and by pressing Enter. And then I'm shown this list of all the software where one click installs exist for media systems, BitTorrent clients, some cloud services, etc., etc. I'm going down here because I'm looking for um, a home automation solution. Here it is, number 140, Domotics. So by pressing the spacebar, I can place an asterisk in front of that selection. I can choose other pieces of software as well. For example, if I want to set up a Pi Hole server or uh, an FTP server or other servers which I will not be doing for the time being. I press the tab key, then the OK option is being selected. I press enter here. When I made this selection, I can start the installation of, um, of Domotics by going down and clicking on install. I press enter on install, select OK here by pressing the left key, and my installation is starting. So not only the base installation of DietPi is being finalized, but on top of that, also Domotics is being installed. This will take a while, so I will come back to you 
after the installation has finished. So the installation is complete and now I can opt in or opt out of the Diet Pi survey. So the Diet Pi software installation is complete and the system will need to reboot, which will happen automatically when I press OK. To make sure that your Raspberry Pi doesn't change IP address all of a sudden, we need to make it fixed. And to do that, after reboot, we will need to log in, uh, username root, and Diet Pi as the default password. And we can type in Diet Pi dash config to open the configuration screen of the Pi. There are a lot of options in here that I will not cover in this video. The one that I do want to cover is option 7, where you can choose the network adapter. You can configure Wi-Fi or Ethernet, but since my Raspberry Pi is connected through Ethernet, I go to the option Ethernet, and currently the mode is DHCP. What I want to have is instead of a, a mode, a DHCP mode, where the, the IP address is assigned to my Raspberry Pi dynamically, I want to switch it to static. When I then click save all changes and start networking and click OK, the IP address I was assigned dynamically is being converted into the static IP address. When I now go to back and Ethernet, I see on top that my IP address is fixed and it is 192.168.1.45. Also my gateway and my DNS server have been taken over from my initial DHCP settings. Now I can go to my web browser, type in the IP address of my Raspberry Pi and get started with Domotics. It took me a little while before I found out that port 8124 is being used by default by Domotics when installing it through DietPy. And then I land on the starting screen of Domotics. In the next video, we will go into further detail on how to set up and configure Domotics. Something I want to emphasize is the port on which Domotics listens when installed as part of the DietPy appliance. It took me some searching until I found the domotics.com file where I found out that it was port 8124. Thank you for watching the second episode in this Domotics series. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I look forward to sharing my next video with you. Goodbye.